We showed you this at the top of the hour. Right now, more than 400 miles above Earth, a historic moment in space is happening. The first ever private spacewalk is underway. 41-year-old tech billionaire Jared Isaacman, who's bankrolling the Polaris mission, stepped out of the SpaceX capsule moments ago. Now lead space operations engineer Sarah Gillis is taking her turn. Joining us now to discuss exactly what it is that we're seeing is CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood. Bill, good morning. Always good to have you. Can you describe to us what is happening right now and is all going as planned? It is all going as planned. You know, what they're actually doing, is they're, they're testing these new spacesuits that SpaceX built in-house. They're trying to come up with a lower cost, uh, more comfortable, easier to manufacture spacesuits for eventual flights to the moon and Mars when they think, eventually, they're going to need hundreds, if not thousands, of these suits. It's a very optimistic look at it. Uh, and this is a very small step in that direction, but it's a major step. As you said, it's the first privately financed spacewalk in space history. And it's quite a feather in the cap for SpaceX and for Jared Isaacman, the billionaire who put this flight together, uh, to pull this off. And so far, so good. It's going right by the book. And, you know, just so people know at home, they're not just sort of free-floating out into space a la no. George Clooney in gravity. I mean, they're tethered. They're sort of just floating right outside the hatch. But look, space is not a forgiving place. Anything you do is going to involve risks. Um, also, the altitude where they are is higher radiation levels. What can you tell us about the risks involved in a spacewalk? Well, you know, any spacewalk, as you say, is risky, no question about it. I mean, they're in a vacuum. They're moving at nearly five miles per second. You know, if a BB hits you at that kind of velocity, you're going to have a bad day. And there's a lot of space debris in orbit, as we all know. Uh, so there is a risk of that. The radiation levels are slightly higher than what you would normally see on the International Space Station, uh, for example. But you know, really, if you think about it, the entire spacecraft is open to vacuum. There's no airlock on the Crew Dragon. So not only the two spacewalkers who we see outside and, you know, taking in the view of Earth, but their two crewmates inside the cabin are also in a vacuum. Their suits have to work perfectly as well. Uh, so there's definitely some risk in this. SpaceX has spent years preparing for it. And as best we can tell so far, uh, they've, they've, uh, they've hit it out of the park. No problems at all. But, uh, but as you say... You never turn your back on this sort of thing. It is, it's absolutely more risky than the, than the average everyday event, no question. Yeah, you mentioned the lack of an airlock. Um, we, we talked about the suits a little bit. What else is different about this mission from a technology standpoint? Well, you know, the spacesuits are the big item. You know, they've got really futuristic head-up display inside the helmet so they can just glance down at the lower left corner of their visor and see critical data. Uh, they've added hand holes to the spacecraft. They've added a completely new or an additional, anyway, nitrogen tanks and oxygen supplies so they could depressurize the cabin and repressurize it. They had to come up with procedures to keep the astronauts from getting decompression sickness, you know, the bins. Hey, hold uh, one second, Bella. We're, we're hearing uh, applause. Does that mean, is, is Sarah Gillis sort of wrapping up and they're, they're applauding the achievement? Yeah, I do not have video while we're talking, but that's exactly what that means. Uh, it looks like it's, it's gone very well indeed. I'm looking to see if we've got video back, but... Not quite yet, but that's my assumption anyway. Yeah, it looks like this was a few minutes ago, um, so uh, a successful yeah. part of the mission. Bill, what's next? Well, you know, they've got a full suite of science experiments on board that they'll spend the next couple of days working on. These are sponsored by nearly more than 30 institutions. This is very serious biomedical research they're going to be carrying out. And, you know, they said one of their other goals was achieved earlier in the mission when they reached the highest altitude of any piloted spacecraft since the Apollo program more than 50 years ago. So they're really chalking up some first on this flight, and so they've got a lot of work ahead of them. But the two big milestones, the altitude and the spacewalk, uh, they seem to have pulled off. All right, Bill Harbert, always appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much. Sure thing.